And so we're talking about sort of changes and improvements here. How should we think about the um, cadence and possibility for changes made on the Stacks blockchain versus the Bitcoin blockchain? Yeah, I think I think uh, Vitalik had a pretty interesting blog post about it. Maybe it came out uh, three, four weeks ago. Maybe we can link it in the in the notes. Uh, over there, he's, he's kind of like looking at uh, the past five years of decisions in the Ethereum world and what 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 went well, what could have been different, and then looking forward, like what are the big challenges? And the post really concludes at I think a very key point. And the point um, that Vitalik is making is that Ethereum has a choice to make should it become more simple like Bitcoin and focus on being a durable money layer or should it become more complex and experimental uh, as a smart contract layer? And those are two different things, right? And, and I think there's this inherent tension within Ethereum uh, right now, even a bunch of the Ethereum um, core developers, they're now raising the red flag on the level of complexity that is coming into just the Ethereum L1. That it's over time, it's actually becoming more and more and more complex over time. And 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 interestingly, the way we we thought about this tension, like you know, when designing uh, stacks, and our solution is actually very simple. And our solution is just divide things up into two different layers. Bitcoin is the is the layer that is simple and durable, and doesn't change, and it's not experimental, right? So. Introducing changes to Bitcoin has a very, very, very high bar, but Stacks is a separate layer. Uh, it is focused on smart contracts and it, it can be more experimental, right? And you can actually, uh, like obviously you will follow the SIP process and there can be votes and, 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 and miners have to adopt these changes, but compared to how often Bitcoin changes, I think Stacks can actually upgrade much, much, much more, more frequently. And I think that's the mindset that you need to have because it is a benefit, like that is one of the key benefits of being a separate layer from Bitcoin, because we are not saying that, hey, you need to change Bitcoin. So similarly, if you look at Ethereum, Ethereum actually has a pretty fast cadence of making changes as well, but it will always be harder to upgrade an L, like a true L1 uh, that is also trying to be a money layer versus a programming layer on Bitcoin that can actually upgrade like much faster. So I think that's the framework that at least I have in mind. Uh, and so since the launch of the mainnet, we've only basically had one major upgrade, which is uh, which was SIP 12. It went pretty smoothly, I think. Like I think there was a very fair voting process, a bunch of participation, and then a network upgrade went live. But I do think that some of the things that I've mentioned before, some of them will require other SIPs that need to go live. And I do think speed matters here, right? Like because uh, there are developers out there when they're thinking of building their solutions, you know, they can come and they can get excited about the idea of building on, on Bitcoin and, and tapping into Bitcoin liquidity. But if the tooling currently is not kind of like matching up to that, then they, that might give them pause, right? So if, if uh, some of these changes can go live sooner rather than later, it just kind of like keeps building momentum uh, in the ecosystem, which is basically good for everybody. It's good. Like I, I run a business uh, trust machines in in the ecosystem now and from a purely our business perspective i think it makes a lot of sense that if our application needs certain functionality from the underlying infrastructure we have a vested interest in seeing that functionality live sooner rather than, rather than later absolutely thank you now when it comes to a sort of executing on a lot of these updates a critical component for not only stacks but web3 generally is often talent um, and so what are some of the most compelling reasons why someone with sort of a distributed systems background, someone who can really contribute to the core blockchain infrastructure um, may want to work in the Web3 ecosystem as compared to a traditional FANG company? Yeah, I think, I think this is like, it's a talent war out there. Like the crypto ecosystem is becoming very, very competitive. But I think reasons are actually very, very strong, right? Like if, if a lot of people, they feel the pain of, uh, how Web2 became very, uh, like, you know, just in the hand of a couple of monopolies. Like if you're if you're working at a large FANG company, it's called FANG because you could count them on your fingers, right? Like it's, it's a handful of companies uh, that are mostly driven by ad revenue. And we as a society have started kind of like feeling the toll that it's taking on us, right? Like if you are, if you are, if you feel like you, uh, you just type a search, uh, 
in, in Google and then you start seeing random ads like which are scaringly accurate about what you are looking for. Like it gives you like this uneasy feeling, right? So a lot of people have started feeling kind of like the burden or the negative impact of social networking and ad-based networks and privacy violations and so on. And I think if you talk to these developers, like a lot of the time people basically feel like there's just no other alternative, right? Uh, and if you talk to them, especially like years ago, if you talk to them about crypto, um, the image was a little bit like, this is like the wild west, which it still uh, is a little bit, but not as bad as it used to be. And then, you know, people associated with like criminal activities or like really crazy people kind of like operate. All of that is like somewhat still true, but I think it's becoming a lot more professional. And the industry has grown a lot more. Uh, there's a, a lot of fresh capital, like from, you know, respectable funds and institutions that has moved in. And that helps give the level of confidence to some of these engineers that look, this thing is here to stay. Um, and you could be a part of something uh, early on, but but make a really positive impact in society, right? So if you want to work on the cutting edge of uh, of the internet, like this is where this is the frontiers of the internet, right? And and there are some very interesting, intellectually interesting problems uh, to work on. So I think it's a combination of like giving these engineers um, job security because they are getting really high salaries at a Google, right? But I think now some of the crypto projects can afford to match, match those salaries and those incentives, but then giving them really intellectually interesting problems to work on and 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 help educate them to the unique aspects of the crypto industry a little bit, right? Like you said, look, there are some, you know, pretty, pretty uh, odd people in this industry, but they mean well, right? And then this is, this is how this ecosystem works and kind of like handhold them a little bit uh, and, and, and point to the more exciting things that are happening. So I think we obviously plan to do some of that. Uh, Trust Machine is hiring rapidly. So if you are a distributed system engineer, if you are a Rust uh, programmer, if you're interested in kind of like building large scale systems, uh, we are hiring and, and, and you should you just come and talk to us. And it's not just us who's hiring, like other entities in the ecosystem. Hero is hiring the nonprofit Sachs Foundation, uh, a bunch of other entities out there are, are hiring as well. And I think it might actually help, maybe this is already in the pipeline, if there could be like a job board of like, here are like 50 entities in the Snacks ecosystem and here are all the roles uh, that they're looking for. I think that, that could be very helpful. Great, well, thank you so much. Uh, just a plus one, if anyone is interested, please do reach out. Um, and thanks everyone for tuning into Stacker Chats please make sure to like this video, subscribe to Stacks to stay up to date, and let us know if you have any questions either in the comments below or on Twitter. Thanks, Manib, for being here, and we'll see you next week. Bye.